friends, welcome to North Bodoni United Church on this Trinity Sunday, the 30th of May, 2021. In keeping with recent provincial health orders, which restrict congregational gathering for worship, our service this day is being recorded and led by Wilma, our videographer and office administrator, Michael, our musician, and myself, Reverend Don Johnson, minister of the congregation. To respect the provincial order, only the three of us are present in the sanctuary this day. We acknowledge that we meet and work in Treaty 1 land, the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, and Dakota peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are thankful for these first inhabitants, and we commit to working together towards justice, truth, and reconciliation. And we light the Christ candle, the light of Christ rises in glory, overcoming the darkness of sin and death. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, our mystery, you bring us to life, call us to freedom, and move between us with love. May we so participate in the dance of your Trinity that our lives may resonate with you now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is written in the Hebrew Scriptures, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the day that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. 
When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. And the Gospel is written in the third chapter of the Gospel according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have spoken to you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. May God bless to us the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O God, that in the written word and through the spoken word, we may behold the living word, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. This is the first year that I have not been able to begin the Trinity Sunday service with the singing of this hymn. Yes, we did hear Nicaea, the tune for this hymn as today's prelude, but until it is safe to do so, we are unable to sing this hymn, or indeed any other hymns in our services. It's such a great hymn, perfect for this Sunday when we focus on God, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three, yet one, or as the hymn puts it, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. And it is not a hymn restricted to this day in the church calendar. Those of you who are slightly older than me may remember back to the time 
when the first verse of this hymn was the start of worship every Sunday. That practice may have been encouraged by the fact that the Blue Hymnary, as we called it, the first hymn book of the newly formed United Church of Canada, placed Holy, Holy, Holy as the first hymn in the book. Our more liturgical United Churches sometimes refer to this introit, this, this opening verse, as the Sanctus, the Latin name for the response used in the communion prayer of great thanksgiving. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I've always loved this hymn, and it is one of the few tried and true hymns that I could turn to when at a loss for choosing a known singable opening hymn. Congregations still love it, I, I think, although I remember comments I heard at another church I briefly served about that old thing we used to sing every Sunday, and, and look, it's back. I guess it wasn't sophisticated enough for these progressive folks. So why do I love it? Well, think for a moment about the tune. It was written by John Baptist Dykes in 1861, a composer who also wrote, among other pieces, Melita, the tune for that great naval hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Both are, are strong yet easy to sing hymns. With an Isaiah, the tune we heard as prelude, it starts with that marvelous ascending as each of the three holies are sung on higher and higher notes, leading us up to a strong and confident singing of Lord God Almighty. It almost feels like climbing up steps to enter into a sanctuary, a holy place. Perhaps, for instance, the temple in today's first reading, in which the prophet Isaiah imagined the seraphs flying around through clouds of incense, praising God as they called out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Dykes, the composer, wrote the tune some 40 years after Reginald Heber had written the words. His tune bears, to me, strong resemblance, resemblance to the standard communion sung setting of the Sanctus of his day, the holy, holy, holy of his day. It makes me wonder if he was trying to echo that part of the communion service in his tune. If so, then every time this hymn is sung, the centrality of the Lord's Supper in Christian worship is acknowledged and remembered. Coincidence or not, the genius of this tune is that it has the ability to be, to be both gentle and strong at the same time, stately with a hint of mystery. But above all, the tune is matched to superb words, and for me the words of a hymn are always more important than the tune. This is because the words we sing shape the beliefs we hold. And if we are singing weak or, or bad theology, we are misleading ourselves in our Christian worship, development, and growth. There is nothing weak or bad in this text. A picture is painted in our minds of the saints at worship, the faithful of every time and place, joining with the angels of heaven in their adoration of the one truly worthy of our praise. Only thou art holy. There is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love, and purity. The focus of this hymn is God. The praise is directed towards God, and the text speaks of an important truth. As the third verse reads, Though the darkness hide thee, though the eye may blind by sin, 
thy glory may not see. In our arrogance, we make pronouncements about the nature and intention and purpose of God, as though we are good buddies with the divine. Yet God is mystery, and in this life we do not see God face to face, or truly know the mind and will of God other than from what we glean from Scripture. In Jesus Christ, the face of God was seen, though few recognized him as such. In the faces of the faithful, we catch glimpses of the love of God lived out in a human being, but not the face of God. God is mystery, but God reveals God's love for the world in the creation we enjoy, in the wonderful intricacy of plant and animal, of birds in the air and fish in the waters, of all that lives and moves and has its being, and of all that stands still as silent testimony to God's handiwork. God's presence in the world is through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that hovers over the formless void of creation, the Spirit that descended at Pentecost, the Spirit that guides us to life and faith and truth, that moves in and among us, continuing God's care for creation and encouraging God's people to play our part in caring for creation. God is mystery, and our understanding of the Holy Trinity is ultimately mystery as well. Theologians have spent their lifetimes working out and pondering the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, between the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, or however the three persons, yet one God, are named. Often our most succinct theological statements are made in the context of prayer. This prayer from the United Reformed Church is a wonderful example of prayer as theology. You are holy, God the Creator, giving us richly all things to enjoy. You are holy, Christ the Savior of the world, made flesh to set us free. You are holy, Spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell in us. You are holy and blessed, O God, eternal Trinity, and we worship you. The concept of the Trinity is often best illustrated through music and art. I remember seeing a round stained glass window with three interconnecting circles within that larger circle. One circle depicted a hand held up in blessing with YHWH or Yahweh, the Lord God, and the word Abba or Father. Those two words were on that first circle. This was God the Creator or God the Father. The next circle was a classic presentation of Christ as the Lamb of God. The third circle contained the descending Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, with seven flames just below the bird, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Around the three circles was the word holy, presented three times. And as I said, the circles all connected together in the center. How did the hymn writer put it? God in three persons, the blessed Trinity. As God refused to be limited to a special name when Moses asked for the divine name, I am who I am, God declared, so too does all of our language ultimately falter as we attempt to define in human terms what is a mystery beyond our comprehension and conception. So we trust in God's grace. We affirm that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to God's self, and we rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us. And because our language is limited, we are wise to expand and open up our words of prayer and praise. 
For much of Christian tradition, the language of the church has been masculine and triumphal, language that often alienated many faithful people. How typical was it to hear most prayers begin with something like, Almighty God and Father? Through the advent of inclusive language and growing understandings of theology, we are encouraged to broaden our images of God, to be careful and inclusive and expansive as we address God in prayer, to include all people without necessarily destroying the traditions of the Church. Yes, we can use Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in blessing, as I will this day, because it reflects the formula of our baptism. But we can also expand and explore that baptismal language so that it becomes richer and more welcoming. For instance, Brian Wren, a contemporary hymn writer, and we have a number of his hymns in Voices United, offers this. Glory and praise to the Trinity, who was and is and will always be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Janet Morley is another contemporary theologian who offers us many ways of delving into the wonder and mystery of prayer. Today's opening prayer comes from her. Let us hear it again as we conclude. Let us pray. O God, our mystery, you bring us to life, call us to freedom, and move between us with love. May we so participate in the dance of your Trinity that our lives may resonate with you, now and forever. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Father, giver of all good things, for our home on earth and for your unfailing mercy, we give you thanks. Christ, our Redeemer, for your sacrifice on the cross and rising from death that we might live, we give you thanks and praise. Holy Spirit, giver of life, for your abiding presence in our lives and for comforting and guiding us, we give you thanks, praise, and glory. O Holy Trinity, to you be glory and praise now and forever. Gracious God, as we offer you our thanks for our life in Christ, we offer our prayers for others. So we pray for the Church in all its forms and convictions. Inspire your people to follow your ways Keep us firm in faith and filled with hope. Lead all nations in the way of justice and goodwill. Direct those who govern to seek the welfare of their people and to pursue the path of peace. Encourage us to look with compassion on those who suffer from the violence of war and insurrection, civil turmoil and natural disaster that all who are in distress may know that they are not alone in their struggles. Speed the day, O Lord, when this pandemic which has engulfed the world may be tamed and fear be replaced by hope and love. We especially pray for the people of India in their hour of deepest need. We pray for our city, province, and country, as Canada struggles to contain this virus. We pray for our children, their parents, and their teachers as they cope with the complications of the disruptions of their education during these months of lockdown. As well, we pray for those whom we know and love, whose lives have been affected and endangered by COVID. Calling to mind this day, Chris, Melissa, and Jameson, and praying that each day will bring increased wellness, 
healing, and hope for them. So too do we pray for renewed strength and health for those dangerously ill COVID patients in hospitals and at home. And we remember with thanks and deep gratitude and with concern for their well-being, all the members of the healthcare community, as day by day, they tend to the medical and emotional needs of their patients. O Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. So too do we pray for those of our community who are suffering from illness, anxiety, grief, or sadness. In the silence of our hearts, we call to mind those for whom we pray. And in that same silence, in our prayers, we include Shelley S., Joan, and Aaron. Be unto them a source of strength and power and healing. Heal them in body, mind, or circumstance, working in them by your grace, wonders beyond all they may dream or hope. Bring to our remembrance all those who, having served you on earth, now sing your praises eternally. May their endurance give us courage and their faithfulness give us hope. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray, to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith, hope, and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always.